The following message was given on Sunday, August 2nd, 2020 at Lagana Christian Church. We invited the Premier of Tasmania, Mr Peter Gutwin, the Health Minister, Sarah Courtney, and we also had the Finance Minister, Mr Michael Ferguson, in attendance. We thought this was a really special occasion. It followed on just less than four weeks after an upper house member of the Tasmanian Parliament had made some comments in an interview with the National Secular Lobby, which greatly disturbed us. And in that, he said, the decision making of the state and the possible influence of the church should always remain separate. He went on to say, no religious group should feel as though they should be able to influence policy making in Australia. And we were really disturbed about this, and sometimes we hear comments like church and state should be separate. This is a, a quite a misunderstanding about the relationship between church and state. And so in this message that I delivered before these guests, these parliamentarians, I made the point that the history of the church in Tasmania and even in Australia is not one of separation, but it's one of cooperation. This is a historic day for us. First Sunday in five months, we've been able to come back and get yeah, wonderful. And I, I, I was telling people that I honestly thought we would be in lockdown until November next year. And so in a moment, the, the people largely responsible for the fact that we can be here now sitting in this front row, we'll thank them. I wanted to share a parallel from history with you today and partly because what we have experienced here in Tasmania is something I want to address because we hear the expression separation of church and state as if we should never talk to each other, as if we should have nothing to do with each other. And that is clearly not what the doctrine of separation of church and state was ever intended to mean. That, that founding, that no church would have primacy or preeminence. They actually had this concept of separation of church and state, meaning you look after your affairs, we'll look after government affairs. And, and the idea has somehow morphed that the church Christians, church leaders should never speak into any issue regarding politics or what might be seen as politics. But I want to say in Australia, we have never had that. And since 1901 particularly, we have had what is referred to as the cooperation of church and state. So this 28-year-old pastor's name was Dietrich Bonhoeffer. He was, he, he, he was a great, great man. Now, I was privileged. This is a photo of me sitting at his desk. Just take a moment, soak it in. I, on May 10, 1940... Winston Churchill was appointed the British Prime Minister and was commissioned by King George VI. Within four days of his appointment, having gone to the King and explained to him that the situation with almost the entire manpower of the British Army on the beach of Dunkirk. In other words, if these men were wiped out, there was no defence of Britain. The King and Churchill the very first decision that Churchill made at the instruction of the king was to call a national day of prayer. <laughs> Premier, as far as I know, you were the only Australian Premier to call the churches of their state to pray. Now, there will be people who say, well, that was a coincidence. I want to point out another coincidence. Coincidentally, the day after the king and the prime minister called churches to pray, I'll point out three uncanny things that happened. There was actually several more, but I'll point out three big ones. Safety. We care about their rights. We care about their flourishing. We don't just concern ourselves with religion. We're not trying to religionize people. We're trying to care for people. I hope we know that. This is why we are so concerned that the proposed bill by the upper house member in the Tasmanian parliament is actually going to undermine so much of this hard work. The, the Voluntary Assisted Dying Bill concerns us deeply because it really sends a wrong message about the solution to nursing home bed shortages, about uh, acute mental health care, because suicide is not the answer. To think that the Christian community does not have any right to participate 
in the democracy of our state is wrong.